G'day! Today we're going over some things that I may or may not have gone over, you know, more than once. And the first thing we're going to look at is Dash Gap. So here's a car I made a little while ago. It's kind of a bit of a prototype, just testing out. I never finished it off, but we're going to now put in a dash. Now it's also important what dash we're putting in, so we're just going to put in any old dash, even if it is an old dated one. Something like this will do to show the example. We're gonna get it right in here, scale it up as necessary so it's not poking through. And would you look at that, there's a ginormous gap here. And this is what I like to call dash gap. Now, there is two ways you can do this. But the way I would strongly suggest using is in the 3D parts, just a basic, simple little piece here. You got these kind of like partly round bits. So I'm gonna plop that there, horizontally align it, turn it over by 45 degrees, which is actually 90 degrees, but whatever, and then 90 degrees, which is actually 180 degrees. Move that into the center, and now what we're going to do is we're going to line that up, that edge with the edge. You know, close enough. Scale it out, then scale it forwards, and then we're going to turn the window transparency back on a little bit, and we're just going to rotate that until it disappears. Almost done. Already. And it's been only literally seconds. And hey presto. We've basically got no dash gap anymore. Now you can set that to whatever color you want it to be, but look how clean that is. Almost 100% perfect. Now you can fiddle with this, do your own variations. There is one other way, however. You've got these parts. These are now no longer mods. They're actually a part of the game itself. But anyway, you can put them in here. You can rotate them, get them to wherever you want them to be. And basically just fill out the gap. Oh, okay, hold on. Eh then make them like dash color. This will take a few pieces, but you'll eventually get that filled up. So that's how generally you can fill that sort of void or dash gap. Hopefully with this, we'll stop seeing these dashes that require you to be amputated. The next thing is dash colors. A lot of the times I'll see dashes come out and they'll uh, have all of their dials and everything be white. And that's generally because they're using the largest resource of like really cool dashes, which is this mod set. I love it, but they have set custom colors which will turn out white when they're done. So we're just gonna grab one of these and we're gonna put it in kind of generally. We're not gonna do this entirely. We're just gonna plop that about there and then we're gonna export this car. And you can see here that the colors have not exported properly. Now what it's meant to look like is this, but they're not the same. Now, I do love the mod, but they have made it incorrectly. All of these colors are custom, which means that when it goes to export it, it doesn't know what they are. So you just go in here, you go on car, you add a new one, and then you find approximately what the color should be, no shine, plastic, whatever. And hey presto, you're done. I personally have already saved green dial, yellow dial, got like lizard is my red dial. I I've already gone through this so many different times. There we go, fixed that one finally. Now, let's go export it again. And when you look at that, you've got all your colors back in your dash again. Fantastic. Now we're gonna get onto a little bit more of a technical side of things. And that is predominantly going to be wings. Now, lips, I've gone over this a bunch of different times, do not add downforce in BeamNG. Now this has a fake lip here, so that's a lip that doesn't add downforce. And then another lip here, but it doesn't actually add downforce. That's not actually a fixture, that's part of the car body. Anyway, moving on. You'll see here though, it gives me like wing angles and all that sort of stuff, and I can actually affect how much downforce it's getting in automation, but it's not actually doing anything. The only thing that this can actually do is that exported mesh. Let me quickly show you that. Control T brings this up. This actually affects how the mesh goes. So usually the mesh would go with the body, but since you've got this lip here, when it goes to find the point where the mesh should be, it does assign, assign itself to there. So it can actually, in extreme cases, add downforce. If you have a look here on that NASCAR video that I made, this here doesn't actually create drag, as it should create lift, which is a problem. But then here, this actually has a downforce factor. Every panel has a downforce and drag factor. But if the wing is point upwards, that's actually going to be creating downforce in Beam and G's eyes. And I also did a little bit to the front as well. So I put a bit of a bonnet bulge on there to help increase the angle of which that's going along there. And then this slip down here, that's creating a little bit of an angle on the mesh. If we just go ahead and turn this mesh slightly invisible, you can see 
that that is quite a steep angle and that was all very deliberate. So this can add downforce with fake spoilers and lips and everything. But generally lips, unless you're willing to do the work for it, aren't going to give you downforce. Same with spoilers, these do not actually add downforce. A wing on the other hand is the only thing that actually generates downforce and let me show you what I mean. We're just going to put on a very simple wing right about there and just hover it. It doesn't matter. We're just doing this as an example. Now you've got in the wing element. If I hit control T again, you can see that this doesn't really so much have a collision mesh as a collision plane. This here has a large amount of downforce. Great, right? But you want this to be at a larger angle I hear? Well, let me show you. I very much strongly suggest not angling your wing in three dimensions. Let's see if I can show you why. Sometimes this works, sometimes this doesn't. Yeah, you see now how this has come out really glitched? That's not actually a proper plane and doesn't go the full length of the wing? Yeah, so this is very unpredictable and it can cause major problems. Do not angle the 3D fixtures of wings. Instead of angling it, what you do is you go into aerodynamics and then you angle it here. This actually affects the 3D plane of that wing in BeamNG. You see here, nothing is changing, but in BeamNG it does. It's subtle, but that is actually a sharper angle as to what it was before. We'll remove that and let's put on a big splitter. There we go. This is a splitter that I like. We're just going to have to drag it out a little bit because it is clipping into the rear tire and that would be bad. And there we go. We have the wing of our dreams. Now we want a lot of downforce on that, right? So let's go ahead and turn up that wing angle. Would you look at that? We got our wing, but hold on. That's really close to scraping. And then under braking, oh, it's scraping. So how do you get around this? Well, there's a very simple trick for this. You select it first, then hit delete. You just don't have it. What you do instead is you put on one of these lovely looking lips. Now, remember, these don't put in the actual real plane, so it's not going to create that thing which is going to scrape on the ground. So whatever, it doesn't matter. This is only for an example, so we got it there. So what you can do now that you've got the wing that you want, you can make it bigger. So making it bigger does actually increase downforce area. You can go ahead and you can hide it inside or you can have it wherever you want it to be and you can make it transparent and then you can put it down low if you want to do it again. Generally, that's the way to do it. Now, moving on from that, we're going to talk about aeroflow. Now, I've not done a particularly good job here. This is actually quite a bad example. This wouldn't probably have have an under tray and let me explain why look at the amount of air that comes in there's a big area here a big area here and a small area here well this is going to come out as a side curtain but underneath is where all of this air is going to have to expel from and a little bit from around where the sill would be let me fix this dash because now the dash is bugging me ah better already there's a little bit of a gap here sometimes air will come out of there we got a little bit of air evacuation there but a lot of this, if this was a full grill, which it's not, would come out the bottom. So I like to call this aeroflow in versus aeroflow out. Normally car engineers know exactly what's happening, but this is automation and it's not really set into the game itself. I also have actually a little bit of aero out there, but that, yeah. Let's move on. Let me show you an examples of BMWs. Uh, the reason why I've chosen BMW is because they're sporty, but they also have ginormous grills these days. But you'll also notice a few other little things. As we're looking at the BMW M3 here, one of the more advanced aero vehicles, this is going to be an air curtain for the side, and that'll come out generally around the wheel well, just at the edge there to help reduce drag and the wake width of the car. This will probably go in and then go through the brakes and out through the tires. And then for the front here, you can see that it's not only blocked off here where the number plate is and the sides of it, it also seems a little bit blocked off down here. Not to mention a good, say, what, 10% you would say is these slats here. So it's reduced even more air intake. Then what it does with all of that air is it dumps some of it out here, some of it out here, and then some of it will go through the under cladding. Now these do have a fairly flat floor, but there is still area for ventilation for it to come out there. So big vent there, this will be venting out uh, air pressure from inside of the wheel well, which can be problematic. And then a diffuser, but that's a fake diffuser. That's not a real diffuser. So you know that this thing doesn't have a completely flat floor. Looking at the BMW Z4, arguably a little bit bigger, but once again, this is mostly fake. There's only a few little bits there where air comes in and that'll mostly be for air curtain. This grill actually is cropped 
inconsiderably. Let's zoom in. You can almost see here in this really low resolution picture that this area here is all blocked off. That is not actually air intake in the vent. Here, this is not all ventilation either. This looks like vent, but it's really not. And then we only got a little bit of vent here. So area of the vent intake is quite small, but still they have lots of air ventilation to make sure that, that air has somewhere to go. Otherwise, much like always, the air is gonna dump out the bottom, which is going to reduce the ground effect effectiveness of the car, not giving you as much downforce as you would like, and also increasing drag. Now, going to the big snorty car. This thing has a ginormous front grille, but you'll also once again notice that this is all entirely blocked off and they have no qualms about putting extra things here as well to help block it off even more. Then you'll notice that there's little bits of plastic in there, which once again block off even more again. So what you're really getting is just a little bit of vent here, a little bit of vent along the sides of it here, a little bit here, a little bit here. This is all not vent. This is a little bit of an air curtain. And then we got a little bit of a vent here and that's all basically blocked off down there as well. But as you notice that this doesn't actually have a side vent that looks like one, but trust me, it's not. Then there's no hood vents either. So it's expelling most of this air underneath the car or out through the gap there where the hood meets up to the windshield. All really complicated, well thought out design, BMW knows what they're doing. Even if this is a divisive grill, like a lot of people don't like this grill. I personally don't mind it. I don't think it's the best looking thing they've ever done, but at least it's not the bangle bite. <laughs> so I hope you guys have enjoyed today's little bit of a rant slash tutorial sort of thing that I did today. I very much have enjoyed this and I hope to see these sorts of things uh, make it into the next car wave that we see of cars. I would also suggest that if you do see this and want to update your cars, you can update your car and then just edit the post that you've got to put the new .zip file link in there so I can do that one as opposed to your car that has these gaps and whatnot. But for now, I'll catch you next time. Goodbye. Oh yeah, brakes are getting an update, so we'll just leave that as you know what to do.